All right. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Peter Zanoni, Corpus Christi City Manager, and we want to welcome you to our joint city, city county uh, health briefing today on COVID 19, uh, the city of Corpus Christi and, and Nueces County. I'll speak first today. I'm going to provide an update on our COVID 19 statistics. I want to show uh, the community a new dashboard that we developed, and that's uh, live on our website. And then I'll give you a quick update on the public uh, health district's drive-through that'll take place this Thursday. Uh, following me, Councilman Roland Barrera, uh, City Council member from District 3, uh, will highlight uh, a policy decision that City Council uh, took earlier this morning uh, to approve a $2 million uh, small business recovery loan program and uh, Councilman Barrera will talk more about that. Uh, Mayor Joe McComb is here with us this afternoon and he'll be uh, talking about uh, extending the uh, stay at home order that City Council did as well this morning to be consistent with Judge Canales' countywide uh, order. Uh, he's also gonna talk about restrictions on short term rentals that were included as part of our order this morning. And then he'll uh, give us uh, uh, any updates that may be important. Uh, he attended the, uh, via conference call a big mayor's uh, conference uh, call with the governor today. So he'll talk about anything relevant there for our county and area. And then we'll close out today with uh, Nueces County Judge Barbara Canales, who's going to talk about the, the countywide orders on staying at home, making sure uh, points of clarification are made for the community. And uh, she'll also talk about some of the CDC recommendations uh, for wearing face masks today. Uh, she'll also preview some thoughts that, uh, that we're having together collectively on, on some of our parks and beaches, especially uh, with the Easter weekend approaching. So we want to begin to have a, a conversation with the community. Uh, so let me begin uh, my, my part by talking about the updates on our, our case statistics. Um, Every day at four, we compile uh, a 24-hour period of new cases uh, recorded in our county. And uh, between yesterday at four and today at four, we were adding six additional positive confirmed cases. So that brings our total in Nueces County to 65. Uh, I think you can see that the, um, we're not trending down right now, which is a little bit worrisome, but six more today again. Uh, uh, we had 59 yesterday, so that brings us to 65 total. Uh, the six new cases, uh, primarily in the city of Corpus Christi, five in the city of Corpus Christi, and one in uh, unincorporated uh, rural uh, county in Banquete, to be more specific. There are still no deaths in Nueces County, so we're still trending zero on the deaths there. And the, um, the male-female uh, split is still uh, pretty consistent. 51% of all the cases are male and 49% are female. Of the six new cases, more were male. There were four male and two female. And then when we look at our age brackets, we have nine age brackets uh, beginning uh, from zero to 19 and then the spread 10 years apart. So our distribution now is kind of filling in where just about every age bracket has a consistent number uh, of cases with the exception of the 0 to 19 and the 80 to 89. Those have fewer cases, but in between every age bracket um, has a consistent number of cases, which is important for the public to realize that the uh, virus is not prone to a particular age of a person. and It's infecting uh, persons pretty much equally in Nueces County. When we look at, um, at testing, this is an important thing. Uh, we're, st we're still testing. Uh, private labs are still testing in Nueces County, and we have been testing since January. Uh, but what we're getting now is better information uh, day by day on, on the number of tests performed over time. And so as of today, uh, when you look at our, our uh, joint city-county lab where we conduct tests as well as we look at the hospitals that are ordering tests and the commercial labs who are conducting them. We have a total of 818 tests that have been performed uh, to see if one is positive or not for, for COVID-19. When we look at a week ago, the data that we had showed only 154 tests that were conducted. But we know many more than that were actually done, but we just weren't getting good data. And so now with the mayor's uh, order that he put in place that requires uh, 
or that the council put in place that requires uh, hospitals and labs to report to the city, county, health district. Uh, we're getting better information. And you can see that just in one week, the reporting reported numbers to us have significantly increased. So last week we were reporting 154. This week that number is 818 uh, completed tests in Oasis County. And then when we look at just some the averaging of, of the numbers, we've been monitoring now or tracking uh, the number of positive cases since the first one was uh, was announced. Uh, it's been 18 days of tracking. And um, when you look at the total number of cases by the number of days, our average number of cases is about 3.6 uh, positives a day. We had a big spike of 10 on one of our days. So our average is, is around 3.6 uh, persons. So you can see that the six is still kind of high. And we're hoping uh, that that will change over time. And um, in terms of um, where the persons are in terms of their recovery, um, we have, uh, yesterday we had six that were in the hospital. And so good news is two of those have been discharged. Uh, so we still though do have four in the hospital. And three of those four persons who are in the hospital with COVID-19 are in critical condition in intensive care. And then one person is recovering. So there's still four uh, in the hospital, three in critical, one recovering. And then a uh, big picture of all, those, of all the persons, the 65 persons, 57 are in the city of Corpus Christi. We have four in Port Aransas, one in Robstown, and then three in rural, uh, unincorporated Nueces County. Okay, so that's the statistics for this 24-hour uh, period. Uh, what I want to show you on the screen is all this information I just went over is now in a much easier to interact with format on the city county's joint website. Um, there's uh, numerous charts and graphs. Our zip code information is there uh, that we first started reporting on yesterday. Uh, there's some easy call out boxes on the far right side that talks about uh, the number of new cases, total cases, number of tests, total tests and so on. These graphs here uh, show information uh, on number of tests conducted, positive cases. When you click on any one of these, the material uh, pops out. Uh, if we go to the next chart, you can see an example of, um, of some of the uh, COVID, uh, COVID statistics. Uh, the next two, I guess they're not gonna forward them, but um, <clears throat> that is uh, new to our website. So every day as we update the numbers, and what used to be reported out in the black and white tables, uh, those are still there, but the uh, interactive uh, screen is also there on the city county joint website. Okay, and then the final thing I'll update you on, and then we'll have Councilman Barrera come up, is, um, is our drive-through testing. Uh, we know that the city's health, the city county health district has been now for several, uh, several occasions doing drive-through collections for those persons that uh, suspected of having COVID-19. COVID uh, we'll have another drive-through test on Thursday of this week. So today's Tuesday, uh, none tomorrow, but Thursday of this week, starting at 8 o'clock promptly at the old Memorial Hospital parking lot, uh, we'll be conducting uh, tests. And tomorrow we'll have a number uh, for you of, of, the, of the number of persons that we expect to take through the drive-through that day. Okay, so that concludes my comments. We're going to have uh, Councilman Roland Barrera come up and talk to us about the uh, Lift Fund Small Business uh, recovery program. En resumen, las cifras más recientes de personas con el coronavirus es de 65 casos en el condado de Nueces. 33 son varones, 32 son mujeres. El rango de edades con el mayor número de casos, 16 casos, está entre 40 a 49 años. El total de pruebas que se han llevado a cabo desde el mes de enero es de 818 entre hospitales y el Distrito de Salud. También contamos con una página nueva interactiva con gráficas y con un mapa interactivo, información por uh, códigos postales de la residencia de las personas que resultaron positiva a la aportación del virus. Esta página con información se puede encontrar en la dirección www.cctexas.com diagonal coronavirus. Asimismo, se va a llevar a cabo otra toma de muestras para el próximo, este próximo jueves a las 8 de la mañana. Well, thank you very much. As uh, Peter indicated, my name is Roland Barrera. I'm your uh, District 3 Council Member. And first off, I want to thank you for the diligence of the community. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, you know, as the mayor continues to say and, the, and the, our honorable judge continues to say, you know, we'll get through this together. Um, I also want to thank, thank my colleagues for allowing me to bring this information to you. 
um, as well as uh, the city manager and his staff, along with the, uh, the 4A and 4B board who got us all to this point. About uh, two weeks ago, uh, we saw that uh, the lift fund uh, through in Bear County. Bear County had appropriated $5 million to be able to provide relief for small business with at zero interest loans. Shortly thereafter that, um, El Paso, the city of El Paso and El Paso County embarked on the same thing. There's other communities. And so, um, you know, we brought this to the city manager's attention and then it, it, uh, there was a lot of positive activity that started moving forward. I think uh, then uh, this uh, small business task force which uh, is the, one of the individuals taking leadership for it is the county judge, and she's started this uh, really important Code Blue campaign. But I think this is one of the things that's really come out of that. So earlier today, the, our council uh, and uh, with the leadership of our mayor approved an amended agreement with the lift fund, of which we have one already for small business with regard to re a recovery program related to COVID-19. Uh, $1.7 million is gonna be available uh, that will provide uh, up to uh, loans in the, uh, ranging any, all the way up to $25,000. Uh, uh, those terms will be, if they're $15,000, it would be payable over 24 months. If they're $25 million, uh, 25, $25 million, $25,000, they'd be payable over 36 months. Um, and uh, the first 120 days, is the, the loan payment is going to be deferred. Uh, this loan package is specifically for business owners right here in Corpus Christi. Uh, we've also agreed on an amendment to give priority to businesses specifically affected by the stay-at-home order that the governor issued. Uh, this program will not be as complicated as the SBA. Uh, currently, SBA programs are available locally through SBA certified lenders. This package is unique. It's, it's crafted for area business owners who may not have that relationship with banks. And loans will be arranged. Well, will uh, they'll be available at zero percent? And once again, having that four-month deferral for the first payment. Anyone looking for assistance uh, should call the lift fund. They can be reached at 1-888-215-2373. Once again, 888-215-2373. And right now, they're available Monday through Friday from 8:30 to 5:30, and beginning April 3rd. Uh, people can begin uh, submitting their applications online at uh, liftfund.com, L-I-F-T-F-U-N-D.com. Thank you very much. En resumen, esta mañana aprobamos un acuerdo con la corporación Lift Fund para financiar un programa de préstamos para pequeños negocios. Existe un total de 1.7 millones de dólares disponibles mediante préstamos de hasta 25 mil dólares cada uno. El interés de los préstamos es del 0% y es para comerciantes que no cuentan con un banco. Este programa está... Está diseñado para negociantes que han experimentado pérdidas económicas. Los negociantes interesados pueden llamar al 888-215-2773 o llenando una solicitud a la dirección www.liftfund.com. Well, thank you. I wanted to bring you a couple of updates. It won't take long. Uh, we have today, the council did... Uh, uh, adjust our order to reflect what the county judge's order is, and that is to go to uh, April the 30th and uh, incorporate the items that uh, the judge has uh, imposed. And uh, we do this one because we it's a united front and we want to be consistent and try to make uh, everybody work together and, and shoot for the same goal. One of the things that we did in addition to that, and this is the judge's uh, uh, discretion and she was kind enough to uh, give her a blessing because it, it doesn't impact the whole county as it does particular cities and cities still have some uh, some authorization to impose some rules and regulations uh, in addition to what the judge has done if, the, if there's not opposition to that and she's very gracious and the city of Port Aransas uh, last week imposed some pretty uh, strict re uh, restrictions on uh, activities in the city of Port Aransas and uh, we are, uh, we, today we uh, impose a new order, and this has to do with the, uh, uh, these Airbnb and, and VRBO Vibro on these short-term vacation rentals. Uh, we said they're out uh, temporarily until at least April the 30th uh, because of uh, uh, the concern uh, that we, one, we don't have any way to check them for 
you know, rules and regulations and health uh, conditions and that sort of thing. They're not monitored for safety. And it again gets to the fact that uh, these appeal to people and, and we're glad they do. And we hope that as soon as this order is lifted at whatever time that is, they'll come back to Corpus Christi. But uh, we're just concerned that uh, particularly with Easter weekend coming up, that people would be coming in from out of town that probably have uh, greater problems than we do, and we didn't want to add additional people here, potentially exposing more people in Corpus Christi uh, to, the, uh, to the virus. And so uh, let me read it so you know exactly what it says, and if there's any questions, uh, you can uh, probably go and, and get this order on the website and just in case you don't get them all. But the short-term rentals are prohibited unless persons are temporarily occupying said short-term rentals for the purpose of dwelling, lodging, or sleeping during or between periods engaged in essential activities, essential businesses, essential government functions, or essential services, and are occupied by persons subject to a temporary quarantine or self-quarantine for purposes of this subsection. Short-term rentals means residential dwelling rented by the public for consideration other than a hotel or motel and used for dwelling, lodging, or sleeping for purposes of less than 30 consecutive days. And so uh, uh, hotels and motels uh, have people in them, uh, and they're there. And we've got a lot of essential people that are staying there that come in and help. But we've got doctors from out of town, nurses and others that are supporting essential businesses that have to stay in a, in a facility while they're here. But the, uh, uh, the short-term rentals, uh, we feel like, is a, uh, a concern. And then the other, the reason we're saying this now that we'd like, you'd like to need to know is that um, if people are flying into Corpus Christi to come down for uh, their vacation, uh, under the governor's orders, you're quarantined for 14 days once you get through the airport. And uh, if you've got a seven day rental, uh, you're gonna spend seven months in quarantine and you got seven more to go, seven or eight more to go and you don't get to your rental unit. And so um, uh, that we, when they come to Corpus Christi, we want them to have a good time and have a wonderful time because when they get here, they'll still have to abide by all the orders, stay home, don't roam, uh, requirements and so we just felt like that, that was in the best interest of our community to do that and so we imposed that and it went in effect immediately today and, um, and that uh, kind of coincided with what Port Aransas is doing and you can see that um, that uh, also uh, for those that are interested in going to the beaches the state of Texas Texas Parks and Wildlife has just closed all the state parks uh, in the state of Texas and uh, they will be closed until uh, at least April 30th and depending on what the governor decides at that point because it just uh, it was becoming too much of a problem for them to try to maintain the people's keeping their distances we want to show off our parks but we want people to enjoy them when they come and not just uh, be restricted so the state parks across the state have been shut down uh, mustang island state park and uh, i guess lake corpus christi state park or lake mathis state park and others so uh, we need to be uh, aware of that that the, the number one defense of this whole process is this social distancing. And I can tell you, it's a challenge. Um, it's a real challenge for my family right now. We just had a new grandbaby and we haven't gotten within 10 feet of it. And uh, that, that, that really, <laughs> that, that hurts. But uh, the, she doesn't know that we haven't seen her yet. And uh, maybe before she gets too much older, we'll be able to and hold her and squeeze her and start kissing on her and this sort of thing. But uh, I wouldn't dare risk the chance that uh, while I don't have it and don't feel like I have it, if I happen to have something on a piece of clothing or something, I would not risk the chance that uh, one of those little COVID critters might fall where she might be able to breathe it in. And so uh, it really has a lot to do with your respect for your fellow citizens and your family is to really be careful of where you go and what you do. Um, so we'd ask for you to pay attention to that and be cognizant of that and we will uh, we will prevail and we'll get over this and uh, we'll keep moving i've been on several conference calls uh, between the big city mayors and the governor uh, today for almost two hours and um, a lot of it was just general information but some of it was very good i'll just hit a couple of things and this probably most people don't pay this much attention to it but for businesses the franchise tax according to the comptroller uh, the due date has been extended to July the 15th. I think they probably were all due on April the 15th, just like taxes or may have been April the 1st. I'm not real sure, but they have extended the deadline uh, to July the 15th. And then I would like to address a question that I get emails from, and I'm sure the judge does. Uh, and I just want to read this to you because we try to 
give you information that you ask about, uh, and this is based on comments that were made by uh, Mr. Nim Kidd, who's the uh, executive director of the state emergency management operations. And the email goes like this, as, I'm a as a resident of Corpus Christi, I'm concerned about the lack of community testing that's being done on the COVID-19 virus. Well, the testing is done by the availability of supply. And they told us that uh, and they, they get these supplies out, that's to us, and then of course the hospitals and the, they have the, the private labs, but from the county standpoint, the state through a star request program, and it's a very sophisticated program, and they prioritize and, and uh, get all of the uh, materials they have. They divvy them up to where they think that the men needed the most. And, and uh, uh, it's a very, everybody, they try to get something to everybody, but there are times when some areas get preference over others. And I would think probably the fact our numbers are low relative to some other areas in town or in the other state. But, the, um, but they say they do not have anything in the warehouse uh, that stays there probably 24 hours. They get it out as quickly as possible and get it distributed throughout the state. And that uh, there's more than just, a, when you say a test kit, there's three different pieces of that test kit as I understand it. It's the, it's the taking of the, the specimen, then it's the bag that you, you, you take it to where it's get tested and then you got to distract the, the specimen from the test swab and then you do the test. So if any one of those parts is missing, you can't perform a test. And so uh, it's not that we're holding back doing any testing. It's the fact that it's, uh, it's all based on supply and demand. And, and um, I guess the good news to that is that we're not as bad off as some communities, but on the other hand, we would like to have, and I think they're working and they are getting more and more supplies all the time. But it's, um, uh, that's the answer to that question in case you're wondering. It's not that we don't want to test, and it's not that we are delaying it. We're, we're testing as quickly as we can with the supplies that we're provided. So at that point, uh, Judge Canales will come up and make her report. And uh, let me just, uh, again, give a shout out to all of those that have been in the, uh, the arena for the last two months working on this. Again, a thank you for that. And particularly this young lady over here that uh, has to listen in English and think in Spanish and then translate. She's doing a wonderful job. And uh, I just, uh, I'm amazed at that, uh, that ability. Wish I had it. But uh, we want everybody in the community to be able to understand we communicate and uh, with, the, with the signing of our information, we're trying to do everything we can as transparently as we can to let you know that we're here uh, for one purpose, and that's one purpose only, and that's for your health and safety. So, Judge Canales, I won't give you too many kudos, but she's been doing a great job, and, and uh, she's fun to work with. You just got to stay on your toes because she's pretty fast. <laughs> En resumen, hoy firmé un acuerdo para enmendar la orden original de estar en casa. La orden se ha extendido hasta el día 30 de abril, lo que significa que los residentes deben de estar en casa el mayor tiempo posible y evitar reuniones las cuales continúan prohibidas. Existe una adición a esta orden. Las rentas a corto plazo van a estar temporalmente prohibidas en toda la ciudad, incluyendo Airbnb. Esta es otra forma de evitar más contagios por el virus que pueden llegar de otras ciudades. Hoteles y moteles están exentos de esta orden. Si la gente llega de otras ciudades, tal vez tengan que estar bajo cuarentena debido a órdenes estatales. Esta orden está vigente desde el día de hoy y es solo para proteger a nuestros residentes. Queremos recordarle que los parques estatales también están temporalmente cerrados. Quiero recordarles que las pruebas para la detección del virus se han realizado conforme a nuestros recursos y el número de kits con los que contamos. No estamos deteniendo las pruebas ni las estamos atrasando. Thank you and good afternoon, Barbara Canales, Nueces County Judge. I have to honestly say I missed seeing you. Uh, it's been since last Friday that I've been before a press briefing. I think this is a good new format for us. And I'm looking forward to sharing what I think is important information for you to know. I think I want to start out this afternoon by talking about masks. Boy, have I gotten a lot of questions through emails, texts, and phone calls about masks. And the reason is, is because in the beginning, Masks were not uh, recommended by the CDC as anything that we needed to do. But as this virus has changed, as our situation has changed, they have made a different recommendation. And I want to share that with you so that we can help everybody understand it. So what the CDC is saying is that masks are recommended. Let me be clear, they're not mandatory, but they are highly recommended. The type of masks that are recommended are cloth masks. Why? Well, we want to try and preserve those surgical masks for our healthcare workers. 
And that's really important as we talk about the need for supplies all over this country. It's really important that we know how we can be helpful. I know every night that I'm watching the news in New York where two of my daughters live, I want to make sure that I can do everything I can to help. But when we're so far away, you almost feel helpless. Well, here's something we can all do. Using a cloth mask rather than a surgical mask is a way that we can all help. And the CDC website has very good information on how to make your own masks. If you're very crafty, you might know already, but there are both sew and no sew varieties that you can make. Just moments ago, I'm sitting here waiting to come up to the podium and I receive a text from a dear friend, a veteran friend of mine who says, I've got an idea and I like it so much. Here, shooting from the hip, I'm gonna tell you about it. And that is, we ought to have a mask contest. You ought to have fun with your family and work on getting masks that are creative so we can protect our family when you're going out in public. So I want to go over the rules again with the CDC masks. Once again, they advise the use of a simple cloth face covering to slow the spread of the virus and help people who may have the virus and don't know it from transmitting it to others. By covering, um, using coverings from any household items or common materials at a low cost, this is a wonderful voluntary public health measure. And I want to suggest that you listen to this piece very carefully. Children under the age of two should not have a mask on or anybody who has general trouble breathing or is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to remove a mask without assistance. They are recommended, as we said, you've heard lots about N95 masks. That's not the kind of mask that you need or the kind that the CDC is voluntarily uh, talking about. Those are critical supplies, as I've just mentioned, and they must be continued to be reserved for the health and welfare of our healthcare workers and, of course, our first responders. So I want you to see if you can get involved with buying or making cloth face masks and wearing them in public settings as recommended by the CDC. And again, you might ask, am I mandating this? And the answer is no, I'm not. Why didn't we do this in the beginning? Well, because we're always looking to follow the best expert advice, and now the experts say at the CDC they recommend wearing them in public settings. So if you're at the grocery store or shopping or anywhere where you're around a lot of people, a cloth mask is now recommended. For my uh, county employees that are currently working uh, at the courthouse, it is my intention to provide as quickly as possible, and I think we have over 200 employees working inside the courthouse right now, and I think by tomorrow we'll have at least 100 to 150 and we'll supplement immediately. We will be providing these cloth masks for our employees. I think this is absolutely uh, critical that we also help. Our employees are working so hard, and I know when they get home, there's absolutely no time to sew. So that's small gesture on our part that we can do. In light of all of this new evidence, I'd like to demonstrate what a cloth mask might look like. This is one that was made for me. I notice actually we have other people here, members of the press wearing them, so good for you. You're following the CDC recommendations. They were worn over the ears, like this, and then you pull this piece down over your chin. Well, let me see if I can do a better job here. Now, this will make all of people who have never enjoyed Barbara talking so much very happy. You will not hear me as easily, but I promise to compensate and talk just the right amount. My mask is embroidered with the letters, with the, with the words face, faith, hope, and love. I cannot think of three better words to have on my mask, and I'm grateful for our emergency management department for making this mask for me and sharing with me a creed that I so believe, and particularly during this season. There is much to be faithful about. There is much to be hopeful about. And it is the act of love that you are doing for your community when you wear the recommended mask and when you follow the practices that our mayor has so eloquently discussed with you today, most importantly, that of social distancing. I want to transition now into Governor Abbott's order today, which ordered state parks and monuments closed as of 5 p.m. today. As the mayor said, 
There is no doubt that we must be uniform with our state and federal partners. And so I would like to tell you that as of this afternoon, after I've had proper time to study these orders, I want to collaborate with my mayors of the cities and towns that are incorporated inside Nueces County, and by tomorrow we will have an announcement. Uh, but I think it's really important to visit with our city attorneys and our county attorneys, but make no mistake, we have always pivoted in this county to align ourselves with the trends that make people safe during this unbelievable and unprecedented uh, uh, health crisis. And so I think it's going to be incumbent upon us as we close Mustang Park that I collaborate with PINS, Padre Island National Seashore. They're already trending as well, discussing closure of Padre Island National Seashore. So we are going to be discussing tomorrow the, um, the ways that we can be uniform. And I'm sorry to say that it might entail closing our parks and beaches, particularly until the governor gives us another indication of course, this is painful, particularly painful in that we are coming across a holiday weekend. But make no mistake, sacrifice is always rewarded, and I know that you can find joy and love for one another if you don't have access to one of your beloved uh, parks or beaches. It's possible, and we have to do what's in our best interest. And so I'll remind you that tomorrow we'll make certain, after we've properly collaborated, to get back to you immediately to see how we can align again with the governor's order. Let me finally end by saying that compliance, which is everything we've been talking about, social distance and wearing masks and doing all the good things for us, is so important. How many times have we discussed doing the right thing and making sure that the spirit of the order is followed? But let me say that it did not give me any pleasure today to see email after email after email with photographs of places where people were not observing the order. Places that were so common that you could just go down Shoreline Boulevard and capture these moments. And so I think that if you could please do your part, keep sending us this information so that we can be as firm as we need to be. This is no joking matter. These orders are very real. There is real enforcement. There are real teeth to these orders. And my goal has always been education, education, education. But as we come upon the week that our own United States Surgeon General calls our own Pearl Harbor week, this is no time to test whether or not we will enforce these orders. Because I can assure you, we will. This is absolutely important that we work together so that we can do everything we can to keep people safe when we know they'll be at their, well, most likely you'll be off on Friday in many uh, government settings. And so please do everything that you can to make sure that the emails that I get next week are ones where we can be proud about, not where people are showing me evidence of noncompliance. The county information hotline is still open. That number is 414-6000, and I wanna thank our city partners, in particular, the comments that were given by Mr. Barrera regarding the lift fund about this entire coalition dedicated to the second disaster that's happening, by the way, while the first disaster is going on, and that's the economic impact that's occurring all over our country, but particularly to our community small businesses. And so that 414-6000 number will also, I believe, by tomorrow afternoon, by midday, have a third button. If you want to ask questions about the orders, you're going to have a button to press. If you want to ask questions about social services, that'll be a second uh, button uh, to press. And then there'll be a third option. And that third option will be, I need to know more information to recover. I'm a small business and we are hurting. And whether we direct to the Lyft Fund's phone number or whether to SBA or whether to banks, we will serve as a county as navigators. Navigators who are in 
very stormy waters to help small business recover. And so I went, I want to say thank you to the, our IT team and our entire county commissioner's court for helping make certain that we continue this effort of communication so that our citizens know where they can get help. And please let me tell you that help is coming. And so I thank you um, and really would like to reiterate that it is, um, it is with a heavy heart that I tell you some of our most cherished places are now having to be closed because of the fact that this virus is peaking all over our community and peaking all over our state and in some areas in our country. And this is absolutely critical when our governor leads that we follow. Thank you. En resumen, hablando sobre las máscaras faciales, en un principio no estaban siendo recomendadas, pero ahora el Centro para Control de Enfermedades indica que las máscaras son recomendadas para todas las personas. Usted mismo las puede hacer de tela. Su uso es para proteger a las personas. El CDC recomienda su uso especialmente para aquellas personas que no saben si portan el virus. Menores de dos años sin máscara o personas que, o personas que tienen problema para respirar, no se les recomienda que cuenten con una máscara. La aportación de la máscara facial no es una orden, solo es una recomendación. En la Casa de Corte, el día de mañana vamos a estar distribuyendo máscaras de tela a nuestros empleados que nosotros mismos estamos fabricando. Tenemos muchas esperanzas y tenemos fe en ustedes para usar las máscaras. Vigente esta tarde y en colaboración con otros oficiales y representantes legales, vamos a adoptar órdenes estatales en relación a los parques. Mañana nos vamos a reunir y llegar a una resolución. Es muy importante cumplir con las órdenes. Le pedimos a la gente que cumpla, ya que nosotros haremos todo lo posible por enforzar las leyes y no vamos a visitar. La línea de ayuda continúa estando disponible. El número es 414-6000 para cualquier pregunta, incluyendo información para recuperación de negocios. Okay. Well, that concludes our press briefing for today. Uh, we're available if there's any questions from the media. Mr. Sanjani, um, I know that, I know, uh, Judge, okay. Judge Canales said that um, there will be an announcement tomorrow about uh, New Essence County Parks. But with Easter weekend coming up, I know that uh, Labonte Park, you've already canceled the camping, right. but it's still a very popular park for Easter weekend. Uh, what is the enforcement plan for Labonte and West Goose? Right, so um, we'll be working with the judge uh, today, tonight, tomorrow to decide on whether we close the park entirely and just for that reason. So while camping is not allowed, right, we've, we've canceled the camping reservation process. What we think might happen is just what you said, that there'll still be large groups of people going anyway. And the governor's order, as well as the county and the city order, is no groups greater than 10 in the community. So uh, we're trying to head that off. And so that's one of the reasons we're considering uh, closing uh, that park, uh, West Guth, and several other parks. But we'll make that decision tomorrow. Yes, uh, are you including numbers of individuals that are recovered in your total numbers currently? Yes, yeah, so the total number of, of cases that we have today, 65, uh, some of those have recovered. Uh, this week and into next week, we'll begin to show the difference. So right up to this point, we've been tracking for 18 days. Uh, it's been all, we've just said these are the number of persons that have confirmed COVID-19. Uh, soon we'll be in a position to say, of the total number, this number has recovered. Yep. Okay, so we don't have a total number of recovered at this point because no. we aren't far enough out from the uh, diagnosis yet, uh, correct? Pretty much, right. Okay. Yeah, the, there's a 14 day period. The, there may be one or two persons that have recovered. Uh, in fact, there is at least one because we talked about the plasma, the blood uh, uh, thing that's taken place. So, but uh, we'll have, we're going to start tracking that in. And, uh, in greater detail, since we're now we'll have enough we'll have more persons to be able to report on that have recovered. Um, I know that Port Aransas has imposed some stricter um, some stricter restrictions, right. <laughs> for lack of better words. Has Corpus Christi uh, considered some stricter orders in light of what some of our neighbors are doing? Yeah, I don't know if the judge wants to speak to that, but we uh, we've uh, our our beaches and our parks is something we're going to consider for, for tomorrow. Uh, we've done a lot, uh, a lot of additional things beyond even what the governor has suggested, like our canceling of our reservation at some of our parks. 
Um, I don't know if you want to speak any more to that, Judge, but the question is, are we, are we considering more closures uh, to be consistent with the, the governor? So I think we have been very consistent with the governor, and uh, it's always been my understanding that, you know, as a jurisdiction, like a city, you can be more restrictive. And I thought that that was important that Port Aransas have that independence. There were certain, um, as long as there's no conflict, the rule is if I, if any order that the county gives is in conflict with the state, the state trumps. Same thing with the county. If there is, you can be more restrictive as long as there's not a conflict. But if you really think about Port Aransas, it's just complete, you know, demographics and, and just the geography of the island itself. It suits for a more restrictive um, protocol just because of the nature of it. Everybody's very close together. You know, it's not like Corpus Christi where we have, you know, or even Noises County where half of Noises County has got a tremendous agricultural and rural component, component to it. And so I think it's really important to look at the jurisdiction and see how things are helping. But really, when we cured short-term rentals, I can't see that there's any market difference at all. You'll know that there was a restriction on fishing in Port A at one point, but then the governor made that change, so now the governor's rule works there, right? His is supersedes that city of Port Aransas. But I think through this whole effort, what we've said is there's a balancing act, and we're always going to err on the side of you. You matter more than anything else. And as painful as that is for business and for, you know, our recreation, one of the things that has pleased me a lot, given that i both a cheerleader and a referee here today, is when I do see families. I think dogs must be the happiest they've ever been. I've never seen so many dogs being walked ever. You know, and why? Because we crave our freedom. You know, it's very hard to be restrictive. Even just the idea that you're told you should stay at home if it's better for you, is tricky. So I think that we've enjoyed, both the city and the county have said, we believe that your behavioral health, mind you, is very paramount in these times. And so having leisure activity is important. And we think to the extent that we've been both uh, educators and somewhat enforcers, we've done a good balancing act. But when we see that it's not working, the city may, I mean, the mayor and myself are very adamant we're here to protect people, and, and that's what's always going to rule. So I think that you'll see that we will analyze where we could have problems, and we're going to err on the side of safety. Uh, two more questions. The age range from 0 to 19, are there any, I know that there's two confirmed cases within that age range. Are there any young children or infants within that? Oh, um, our health director's not here. She's back at the, the shop, but... Um, We'll have to get you that answer, I'm not for sure. Yeah. And then my last question is, you know, there's been a lot of, um, you know, Mayor McComb brought this up in the letter he received, but there's been a lot of um, concern about the number of tests, and I think he addressed that well. How many tests are we receiving on a daily basis? And, um, you know, in terms of, I know you probably don't know the number of private tests, but how many tests? are Nueces County receiving, yeah. and are we making sure to test all of those daily, or are we holding some of those back? Yeah, so um, the test that is performed in the lab is what you're referring to, uh, where our microbiologists are analyzing the swab taken from the patient. Uh, so we do know, we have it broken out by what we do in our Nueces County City Lab, as well as what the private vendors are doing. And so that includes like a lab core or a Quest. Um, so. The, the numbers change uh, in terms of how many do we do because of supply issues. Uh, we want to batch at least 20. You can run a sample of 20 at one time. And so it takes the same amount of material to run 20 as it does one. What is the requirement or what are we shooting? Well, that's a moving, that's a, yeah, that's a moving target. So this week we got some, mid last week, and again this week we got some more materials in. At one point last week we were close to being out. And it was at the last minute, working with our consortium and our EOC and uh, our, uh, our hospital consortium that we were able to get some more material. But nationally and, and arguably even globally, that those materials are in short supply. Uh, but we're do, what we're doing is, uh, is, uh, is one of the best practices. So we do a sample of 20 at a time so that we're not wasting resources. 
Uh, but uh, if you look at the last two days, um, the, our, our city county lab did 24 tests yesterday. Today we did uh, 16, or at least, uh, yeah, we did 16. Uh, from the hospitals, uh, we received 44 confirmed tests completed. Today, yesterday it was 126 that they reported to us. It doesn't mean they did 126 necessarily on that day because uh, we're working to get information, so they may have uh, given us several days in a row. Uh, when you look at our total number of tests that have been completed, which is 818, uh, the city county labs have done about 350, and the private sector has done about 450, more or less. Yep. Okay. Just a cl clarification are those including private physicians that are doing testing also? Are you guys getting those numbers? Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm not sure if private physicians are actually doing the analysis. It takes a microbiologist in a, a various CR setting. So the physician may be taking the swab, but then it's sent into a private lab where the, the analysis is actually performed. You guys are getting those numbers yes. also? Yes, yes, we okay. are, yeah. Okay. Slowly, but surely, you know, it's been, yeah. Yeah, did you I just, wanna, yeah. yeah, I just wanna, and I, actually the mayor kind of started, I was real impressed with the scientific explanation. Uh, and so I'm going to expand if that's okay on it because you really started to explain exactly why it's confusing. I wish there was this kit. This word kit is a misnomer because what it what we really need is to talk about. And I guess this gets in the weeds, but you don't have to listen if you're not interested. But uh, you need a swab, right? You need a capable, trained nurse in proper PPE to take that swab. Then you need something called viral transfer medium to put that swab inside, preserve it, put it in a biohazard bag, and zip it up. Then you need something called nucleic acid. It's a reactive agent, okay, that helps you extract the RNA DNA from that sample, from that specimen is the right word. Then in this laboratory, we can run actually 20 to 21 I think it's 21, with five controls. So it's 26 total. Five of them are controls, okay, so that you, you know what you're measuring against. However, this community has the capability of running 192 in 12 hours because of a secondary lab um, that was purchased by Krista Spahn. But you have to have, and so some days, it's, it's such a difficult question to answer. We say, how many tests do you have? Well, I might have tons of viral transfer medium, but I don't have enough nucleic acid. Or maybe I'm out swabs. So this idea is really, it's just think about science, the way it used to be in school when you were in the lab. If you're missing an ingredient, your kit is missing. It's like a doctor's kit that you open up and it doesn't have something basic in it. So what happens is that when we know we're running low through the county, we submit what's called a star request to the state. And we do this in plenty of time. In fact, when we started testing, we said, we don't have enough. And then we ask for our partners through TEDM to help on our behalf ask to get those supplies. And thank goodness, had there been close calls, you bet. But we've always been able to continue testing. Now, theoretically, we haven't turned anybody away because we're following the CDC guidelines. So if you meet the criteria through that two-step process after being screened properly, you're gonna get this test. I wanted to talk about the doctors. The doctors don't use their labs at all. All they're doing is step one, taking the swab, right? And the next thing that happens is that it goes to the laboratory in its biohazard bag, right? And it gets tested. So it's very important to know that there's only two ways to test here in our community, private laboratory or through the health authority. But Krista Spahn, with the help of the hospital district, has this amazing lab. So if we were to see numbers that required greater testing capability than what we can do, then I would suggest to our team that we get on the, you know, star request and we get more of this this product, right, this stuff, this resource that's so important. But that's been the trick, is having too much of one or not enough of another and not really having this whole kit thing. And, you know, you're, 
you learn more than you ever wanted to know about this stuff, but it's fascinating. And the more you know, the better you can understand it. And I have to tell you, some people say it's too much in the weeds, Barbara. Don't talk about that. It's not. I know you understand it. I know if you really are interested in understanding what we have and what we don't have, you'll follow it. And that's where I think that I really want you to be our messengers and communicators. And we're going to keep hoping, answering the questions as, as best we can. But if it appears vague, it's because the answers aren't easy. They're just more, what is that great movie? It's just complicated. One more question. I don't know if you can answer this, but I think we're getting the same emails the mayor is getting about uh, residents not being able to get tested. Um, at some point, do we think the people that feel they think they need to be tested, will they be ever tested? So that's going to be a good day for our country, right? And that's when the CDC allows us to do that. We follow the protocol, as painful as it is. If, um, you know, I'll give you a great example. Uh, taste, the loss of taste and smell has become, for many, a symptom. But yet, it wasn't the only thing that got you tested. You had to kind of fall into line with the other symptoms. This virus is, almost seems like it's smart. It almost is like it changes on you. Um, like, you know... <laughs> artificial intelligence. So we're getting smart too, and we are going to have to pivot. So maybe there'll come a day very soon where we can test more people. But right now, through the health authority and the private labs, it's the same. You have to meet the criteria. And guess what? Only a trained physician can make that determination. But then you have to have the, you know, the CDC gives you a person under interest, a PUI number. That's the only way you can get tested is if they say, yes, they agree with you. After you document it, they give you that. Is it frustrating? Yes. But my job is to make certain that we, we stick to the protocols that our government is getting us so that we can have some, some control over, over this destiny. I want you to know that the county, the city, CBRAC, everybody, as you see developments on television, rest assured we're pursuing them. So anything having to do with rapid testing or these types of opportunities that you're seeing on the television, we too are following every lead and every opportunity. And that's my prayer, is that we will be able to test anybody who believes they meet the need for testing. But it's not here today. Okay, uh, any other questions for today? Okay, very good. We'll be back again tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Thank you.